This is Banjo, and today I'm going over the startup procedure for the Focke-Wulf 190 in DCS World. We'll start by verifying we have full control of our control surfaces by checking our aileron, elevator, and rudder control. Once we verify we have full control, we'll move on to enabling the oxygen, which is the blue handled valve on the front right portion of the cockpit. At lower altitudes, the oxygen is not needed, but if you're flying at any sort of an altitude, you want to make sure it's enabled. Next, verify that the landing gear is in the extended position and set the altimeter for the QFE of the takeoff airfield by rotating the pressure set knob until the indicator zeroes out. Beware, rotating the knob past zero will introduce an error, so it's best to bring it down to zero and then slightly up until you see the indicator move. Next, uncover the circuit breaker panel to the right of the mechanical clock on the right side of the cockpit and press in all circuit breakers. You may need to lean or close the cockpit to access the remaining circuit breakers. Next, move the magnetos into the M1 plus 2 position by moving them for fully forward, and move the fuel tank selector fully forward into the open position. Next, enable the fuel pumps on the secondary circuit breaker panel. Bear in mind, the top circuit breaker controls nav lights. Next, set the throttle lever to idle using right alt home. Finally, we could run the starter. I'll start the stopwatch to demonstrate. It takes 25 seconds. So we'll start by holding in the starter, and while we wait, we will check our fuel quantities. As we can see on the yellow gauge, we already have our forward tank selected, which is full. The middle position on the selector is off, with the right position on the selector being the rear tank. We'll also set our radio into channel 3, which is used to communicate with ATC, and we'll call for engine startup. At this point, the starter is fully wound, and we could pull the starter by right-clicking and holding, and waiting for the engine to start up. Once it starts up, you can release the starter, and throttle up to 1000 RPM. One thousand twelve hundred RPM is our max RPM until our oil entry temperature reaches forty degrees Celsius, as shown on the red gauge, the lower center of the cockpit. Once forty degrees oil entry temperature is being reached, we can advance the throttle until we reach eighteen hundred RPM until coolant exit temperature has reached sixty to seventy degrees. Just above the oil temperature, we have a control for our radiator flaps. And if need be, we can open or close these to control how fast heating occurs. As we can see in the open position, the cowling flaps around the engine are open. We'll leave these closed to accelerate the warm-up process. At this point, I'll skip ahead a few minutes until the oil entry temperature has reached 40 degrees. Now that the oil entry temperature has reached 40 degrees, we can run the engine RPM up to 1800 degrees to increase our coolant exit temperature displayed on the blue gauge until it reaches 75 degrees. When we do this, we're going to increase power to the point where the plane starts moving, so we're going to hold in the wheel brakes, increase the throttle until we reach 1800 RPM, and monitor the coolant exit temperature until it reaches 75 degrees. Once it does, the Focke-Wulf 190 is ready for taxi.